Welcome everyone to the governance call for April 27th. Yeah, let's get started. Today's, as usual, relatively action-packed. I uh, got a lot of stuff going on and so got a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, but yeah, a couple of things today that we'll, we'll make sure we'll cover are Falcon Plus Day. Again, like a quick update on the flow of data cap as I've sort of been doing in the previous calls. Um, discussion on the open issues. Uh, this time around, actually, there's only like one like very like open for discussion issue. Many of the other issues are actually sort of lined up more closer to implementation. So we'll have slightly more tactical discussions than we usually do. Um, and then the big item around notary elections. Uh, so yeah, lots to get through. Starting out around Falcon Plus Day. So just so you guys are aware, uh, we had to schedule this for May 13 so that we could get all the right event support that we, we needed uh, for the recordings and things like that. And so um, the initial date was May 11th, which was Tuesday because we wanted to replace the governance call for that week, which is actually the next governance call. And at this point, uh, it'll be on Thursday instead of Tuesday. So I'll, I'll put out a bunch of reminders as well so people are aware, uh, but we'll probably just replace the notary governance call for that week. And part of this, it'll have a significant chunk dedicated to like community showcase which should be open for like anybody in the network, like regardless of what role you play in the network, it's it's sort of open to you. Um, and so Andrew had this awesome suggestion of effectively providing a forum for uh, notaries who were interested in sharing more uh, about like their experiences, like how their processes had changed over time, uh, as well as learnings that they'd had from this round of elections and this round of data cap allocations. And so uh, I think this would be an excellent place to do it. Uh, we're considering running this more as like a sort of moderated open floor type thing. So like open for like 40, 30, 40 minutes or whatever, and people can show up, share their screens, share their uh, sort of interesting learnings and takeaways. And so, um, yeah, if, if this is something you'd be interested in doing, uh, Andrew, I assume you're interested, so I have you on the list. But for others that would also be interested in sharing, uh, please reach out to either me or Megan so that we can organize around and, and curate it and make sure that there's enough space going on. Um, of course, this is also relevant for clients and minors as well who might have interesting learnings or if you've participated in similar programs around just generally contributing towards Falcon's usefulness, um, such as Slingshot, uh, this would also still be a good opportunity for you to talk about like the interface in between those things and, and your takeaways and learnings from this. Um, at least that's the sort of approach that we're currently taking. We'll keep you updated as that changes. Uh, but yeah, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Come participate. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be great. We're going to make great content so more people understand Filecoin Plus. We're going to have more people in the community. It's going to be so good. Yeah, exactly. And we need we need that because that's right now the, the community, there's, there's, you know, 20 of us or so that show up at these calls. And while that's really important, we're also shaping the most important program for Filecoin. And so the more, the merrier. Um, and in, in a similar vein, uh, there's a couple of efforts to increase the quality of the content around uh, Falcon Plus. Uh, and so I'm really sharing the link that I put up at the previous call, which is in the Falcon Doc section. We now have a Falcon Plus section. Please review it, share your feedback, send it to your clients, send it to your buddies, send it to your mothers, brothers, sisters, let them read up about the fun things that you do. Uh, and if they have any feedback because they don't understand, then it would be awesome if we could like work on this uh, and, and improve the standard of this thing so that uh, it becomes a valuable resource for everyone who's trying to learn more about Falcon Plus. Yeah, plus if we do our job right on Falcon Plus Day, it should make everybody's life easier because uh, then when you guys uh, as notaries are like getting questions, uh, you'll have like places to point people to as opposed to uh, answering similar questions. Yeah, uh, all those sessions should be recorded and, and I think we'll be live streaming the whole thing as well. So that should be pretty cool. Cool. With that, uh, let's talk a little bit about what's changed in the last couple of weeks. So uh, in the last two weeks, there's been about, I think, nine data gap allocations that actually went to the repo, uh, five in the last week. Uh, it amounts to about 26 terabytes allocated in the last seven days, which is a slightly above half of what it was the last time I shared this stat two weeks ago. Um, so I think the rate at which applications are coming in is, is probably uh, slowing down a little bit. Um, not entirely sure why, but... Yeah, it, it looks like generally responsiveness seems to be going up. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but I do see that in general, like the, the trend line uh, of new apps and, and new data cap allocations is slowing down. If anybody has a hypothesis, feel free to share. Uh, if not, I think it's just, you know, a symptom like these things will change over time. And so as long as we're aware and tracking, we'll keep learning and growing. 
Um, the last thing I want to call out is we we actually finally have math wallets notary also able to make allocations. I got I got the message yesterday that uh, they were able to make the first actual allocation after several months of having to go back and forth and, and get like the right address working. So that's that's great news. Um, in terms of the total like data cap distribution, just updating the stats. Like I actually had a couple of errors in this, so I'm, I'd like to apologize for for the last one, but this should be corrected numbers. Uh, I switched to writing everything in, in Tabby Bytes as well, so uh, it's easier to follow. Um, but yeah, basically at the moment, this is what the breakdown looks like. And then Emma, I know that we were chatting on GitHub and in the Falcon Plus channel uh, about this yesterday and a, and a few days prior as well. Uh, so this is this is the current stats that I'm looking at, uh, where currently about 540 Debbie bytes um, have been allocated with across like 290 allocations or so. Uh, and then of that, about 35% of that has been used in deals uh, with miners. Um, that stat continues to creep up, which is good. Uh, but we should always be sort of working towards ensuring that clients are empowered and enabled to make the deals that they so desire. One question deep, uh, or one remark on that. Um, actually, Personally, I've been uh, stuck to allocate additional data cap uh, because it seems like now we have to, or maybe that was the case before, but we have to pay some fees to just publish the the allocation on the network. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, maybe my address is now running out of field, so that's the reason why. But that the, the last two allocation I tried, they both failed, and uh, I can't see them on the interface anymore. Interesting. So I don't know okay. If other people get the same, went through the same issue, but um... yeah. So it, it, there is a fee associated with it. I think initially, after the, the round of allocations, we just had uh, a wallet send all of the notaries some amount of of uh, Falcon as part of like the general grant that was going in towards setting up in the Falcon Plus system. I assume that that model will continue uh, for the time being until we come up with a better solution. Uh, and so if you're blocked on that, I think the immediate thing we can do is right after this call, let's go. And no, 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 I'm not blocked on that, but that's okay. I can put one fill on this address and, and just, I, I no, just we should, yeah, that should also be given to you through like the fact yeah, that, but that, 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 that the only thing is that the, the, it just disappeared from the, yeah, so in the, the, I, no I longer than the, app. At the beginning that the reason why uh, there was not enough fill on the address actually. So, uh, I, I understand so, that you can try. Do you, do you know if the GitHub issues for the associated thing are still there or no? Uh, I, I will probably ask the guy to just create make another one. one. Yeah. Okay. So I am meeting with the team that runs the Falcon Plus app in like about an hour with Megan as well. And so um, I'll also flag this and see what happens in the case of an error. It's possible that it's the GitHub issue is still there, right? So it's possible that you can regenerate the, the GitHub issue is still there, that's for sure. Yeah, okay. So do you mind, by the way, in the notary channel, just sending me a link, just saying here are the two. No. Yeah. And then that way I can we can follow up. Thank you for letting us know. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So uh this based on this, I, I also want to bring up like the fact that things are still actually improving, which is great. Uh, so this is the little handy dandy table that uh, that Andrew put together a few weeks back. Uh, but yeah, on average, the days to grant is is reducing quite a bit, uh, and then the days left open also generally is is reducing quite a bit. So thank you for the great work that you're doing, notaries, in being responsive. Um, and if there's anything we can do to help with that, feel free to let us know. Um, Andrew, I did have a question for you where when I grabbed a, an image for this call I, I saw that like the bras allocation here granted was zero whereas in the past this is last week's so it was at one um i don't know if this is meant to be like this is time bound correct the table Ooh, uh, the okay. granted should be all time i think that's probably a bug i'll okay. take a look uh, sometime this week so um thank you no, no rush, but I think what we're really interested in is, is the third column and, and that seems to be decreasing. So that's awesome. Do notaries in general feel like things are well or is anybody feeling like they need more support? Swamp, like one of the things that we talked about was that in, in general, you should 
feel more comfortable just sharing in the notary channel, for example, if, if you feel like you can't get to a particular application uh, and want to distribute that app to somebody else or like effectively reassign it to a different notary, like that kind of engagement should be perceived as like acceptable and, and all right. And in fact, encouraged because it will help the client get to the data cap. Um, and so, yeah, if, if at any point there's anything we can do to support or your fellow notaries can step in and help you, feel free to, to reach out on that channel. Um, but yeah, hopefully generally people are feeling good. And I just see Sonic nodding. So I'm going to take that as a yes, but I don't see anybody else. So hopefully oh, we're all nodding oh. there as well. Uh, I, I want to ask something, right? So can you like remove the first one, the, the first one and the, the ring phone? So it's all represented. The, uh, the there are like two old accounts for Fembushi Capital. So we we register a new one. So the first one and the, the ring one we, we we no longer use that account. So you can remove that uh, from the table. Yeah, that is a good call. Okay, Andrew, okay. did you catch that? Yeah, I'll top it in in the in the chat. That would be good. Yeah. Thanks. Good flag. Um, yeah, w one thing. Uh, sorry, but I see that uh, the average uh, grant number of days is like forty for me. I, I think there is um, a mistake here because I I'm. Is it based on the how long the issue stay open? Yeah, and I saw and, that you left one open even after you granted. Yeah, I, I asked the guy to. I mean, I reopened them to okay. so they can just put all the CIDs inside. So uh, okay. I think that's fine. I I don't think this is meant to be like a a like we should just view this as a, like the sort of guiding like, guiding time. Yeah, yeah. yeah the the other thing is that like um, as part of that dashboard that I sort of previewed in the past that we'll be hopefully presenting and sharing for for public access at Phil Plus a day. Um, the math there for like time to data cap is actually from like po point at which GitHub issue is open to the epoch at which the data cap is actually granted on chain. Uh, and so even if the GitHub issue stays open or conversation continues to happen in the GitHub issue, it, like the stat will actually be to when the message was actually posted uh, from your account to the address of the client. Uh, and so that should hopefully be a more accurate representation that we can then feed into this table and feed into other places as well. I see lots of stuff coming in on the chat. I, this is probably um, Surhao and Andrew, cool. All right, let's talk about the issues. Uh, action pack, fun part of the call. And so uh, there's there's three there's three issues that we need to chat about in terms of like implementation next steps. And I would imagine that this will be a little shorter part of the call. And then uh, we have a full section dedicated to notary elections and then and one more open issue. Um, yeah, so for the first one, uh, this was raised, uh, I think, two governance calls ago now uh, from Andrew around adding an auto close bot to the planned onboarding repo. Uh, I think it was generally well received in the first call uh, and it seemed like a pretty quick thing for us to align on. Uh, so just want to update that like the Falcon plus bot will be modified to effectively have the functionality that posts a little snippet that says, hey, like nothing's happened on this issue for 20 days. Feel free to reopen this issue uh, if it's still relevant uh, and it will start closing out issues that are older than 20 days. Uh, so that should happen in the coming weeks. Um, so unless anybody objects now, I guess forever hold your peace. Okay, don't forever hold your peace, but this is an experiment that we're probably going to go through with. Uh, and so, yeah, as a community, you know, feel free to sort of react to that and uh, share your thoughts, especially as that evolves. But yeah, as of now, it seemed like everybody was sort of in line on this one. So we'll be trying it out. Cool. The second one was also opened by Andrew, uh, I think two governance calls ago, which is around the idea of adding an anticipated response and throughput for notary applications. Uh, so I apologize. I think my text is being covered slightly by a picture here, but effectively um, what I did was we had, we had a little templatized snippet that was being posted at the end when a notary was about to be confirmed. Uh, on that snippet, I added a section borrowing some of the language from Andrew's issue that says like commitment uh, to efficiently serving the network. Um, and so effectively, you know, it, it would be good if, if actually, I'm, you know what, I'm going to give you 20 seconds of silence as you read this little blurb and tell me what you think. And I'm especially curious what the current notaries think.
thoughts or reactions? Andrew, does this sort of achieve what we talked about in with regards to that particular issue? Yeah, it looks, looks good. Yeah, I have Julian's camera on, so I'm just watching him read it. When he's done, I'm going to assume most people have read it. It's all right. Perfect. So with that, I'm going to close these two issues out. Uh, I think 104 actually already closed out. I open up a PR. If anybody is interested in, in modifying the language, uh, I'll keep that open for a couple of days and, and take any feedback before we merge that in. Uh, for 109, um, just keep you updated. This is the code for the bot is, is tested and, and the functionality is added. Um, currently, we're down to 15 open issues in the repo, which is great. We're, every week, we make some progress. Uh, so for those of you that, you know, are interested in adding topics or looking at what else is, is open, please feel free to check it out, share your thoughts, um, and, and let's continue working towards iterating in, in this community and making sure that we're moving forward. Um, two, two weeks ago, there was an issue like, um, uh, so we can reapply, I mean, clients can reapply with the same address to get more data cap. Is that so, approved already? So that was approved, yeah, that was approved, yeah. um, I think nearly a month back almost now like that's fit 12 so that was approved and that's supposed to be part of the next big actors release uh so the latest is uh, from the implementer sync yesterday across the different implementations i think they're agreed that like that fix will roll out uh, sometime in mid-june uh, and so mid yeah okay. so we're about two months ish i would say away from from that uh, i also want to note that if an address actually goes to zero with data cap, then you can get more data cap at that address. So it gets removed from the list of like, it gets removed from the verified registry actor effectively uh, when it's at zero. The problem is if it's non-zero, then you can't get more data. Cool. So this is uh, the, the fun one that we dragged Julian out for today, but uh, along the lines of onboarding uh, projects that have demand for a really large data cap, uh, so I did a little bit of research, actually met with a couple of clients in the last uh, couple of weeks that I would anticipate wanting to use this, uh, including Starling, Discover, a couple of other uh, projects that were introduced by other notaries actually in the call. So thank you for those of you that have been doing active outreach and looking for uh, clients that'd be interested to move some of their data onto Filecoin. Uh, and so based on this, I sort of wanted to propose like a slightly modified version of scope that as compared to what we were previously looking at, which was a little bit more like cookie cutter and a little bit more like, uh, you know, just flat, like throttles and flat policies uh, that would have applied to every single client. This, this sort of version uh, is a little bit more nuanced. Uh, and so as we also are iterating on sort of the implementation side of this, uh, I did want to just talk through these and get your opinions on them. So um, the, yeah, I guess like, maybe the easiest way is, is to, for me to call out like a couple of these bullets. Uh, so the first one is that like, I think a client should have a clear sort of allocation strategy that's outlined in their application. So that includes like their deal-making strategy, like how they'd be allocating for minor and, and how, like what the rate will be actually at which they'd be onboarding their data, but then also like a little bit of insight into the a methodology for how they'd be identifying their miners. And so if that's like some sort of objective we'll be using FillRap or if we're using some other interesting mechanism by which uh, miners will be selected, then that should be shared because not everybody will have the same sort of rate at which data cap will be distributed across different miners. So having like a flat percentage that is not nuanced to the way in which a particular project works, like may not like actually yield value, which is here I'm sort of defining as like this, this would be useful in my opinion, if we actually enable clients that have several pebby bytes of data that like could actually benefit benefit from running on, on Falcon. Um, and so in sort of in that spirit, like tweaking these to say like, it's more about like understanding each of these clients, there's probably not gonna be that many anyway. Uh, and so like creating room for them to express like how they'd ideally like to, uh, to function and then having the notaries like discuss and limit accordingly based on what we feel would be reasonable limits is probably a way to go based on that also one of the things that i think it's super important to flag is that like 
this is all public data sets. Like all of these things that are being stored are should be accessible to anyone. And so that means two things. That means not only is the data like not weirdly encrypted or hidden, like anybody that has access to that data should not need any special permissions to be able to access what's in it. But also that like in general, the miners that are being selected to store this should be supporting retrieval of that data on the network. And so if somebody does want to go and get like a Starling video clip, for example, um, they should be able to do that. And in fact, like through this process, we should have both manual and automated verification that includes like going through the flow uh, of retrieving the data from miners. And so uh, that's something I'm, I'm still sort of thinking about as a bit of a work in progress, but I think that that would be very important for like the feedback loop that's required. Uh, so we have a couple of ideas there around like some of the things that we'll be doing for Slingshot as well that I'd like to share around uh, how we can do some of the uh, verification around retrieval. Um, even if it means like me or someone else makes a deal like once a week for some of these clients, there's not that many clients. Like the goal is that we should ensure that uh, it's the right kind of data that's being brought into the network. Um, and then the last bit I wanted to call out is that previously I proposed like a 5% or 10% like allocation rate throttle, uh, but that didn't seem to be super well received by some of the clients because like for them, it depended on like how quickly they could get data cap onto their network. And so what I'm proposing instead is effectively that like we'll have two data points from the application. One will be around the total amount of data cap that they've requested. And the second will be like how quickly they think they can actually make the deals with that data cap. And so what I'm sort of proposing is, is like a bit of a ramp up uh, where the, the first allocation is either the lesser of 5% of the data cap they've requested or half of like their weekly data onboarding rate. Um, the second allocation is the lesser of 10% of the data cap or one week's worth of, of their data cap. Uh, and then third allocation onwards is basically uh, either they're getting about a fifth of the data cap that they requested or about what they'd need in, in two weeks. Uh, and so my expectation is for the really large clients, they'll probably fall into like based on the weekly allocation rate. So having to come to notaries once every two weeks, I thought was a pretty reasonable sort of time for uh, notaries also getting time to do due diligence as needed uh, on whether or not the client's operations were good, but also like it takes some amount of time for getting multiple signatures on, on a multi-sig. So uh, yeah, any thoughts, any reactions on this? Would love to get some feedback because this is something that like I think we should operationalize very soon. Julian, what do you think, since you're one of the original openers of the issue? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, as I said uh, on, on, on GitHub, I mean, I'm fully in line with this. I think it's, it's a very good starting point. Uh, we may change this a little bit when we see the, the first project and we take some, you know, yeah. let's learn from, 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 from there. But otherwise, I think to start, it's, it, it, it's answering all the, the, the thing I have in mind. So. Cool. I'm happy with this. Awesome. Really glad to hear that. So I actually shared a link to uh, in that issue as well for like what the application could look like. Um, the request we got from the team that works on the bot is that we do this in a different repo so that they can write a dedicated like app that works for this uh, because like the flow will effectively be that like every time a client is approved for something like this, it's as if a new notary is being stood up, right? So like there'll be a notary that is in the form of a multi-sig oh. wallet with the set of notaries on the issue that have opted into it. Uh, and so the root key holders would be involved. So it, the first part of the flow, it feels much more like what needs to happen in the notary governance repo. But then the rest of the flow is much more similar to the client onboarding repo where it's like the client is saying, I need more data cap. The notaries are agreeing to send more data cap. Uh, and so I, I think you will probably just create like another repo um, called like Falcon plus large clients or something. Uh, and then I can, uh, probably paste the application format in that sometime this week as well. It's like write up some basic documentation, how that would flow. Uh, and maybe I'll ping uh, out in the Falcon Plus and the Falcon Plus notaries channel so that I can get some feedback as, a, as we're doing in the next few weeks. Andrew? Yeah, sorry if you said this in the introduction and I just missed it, but um, wouldn't, this, wouldn't this be a good candidate for what all uh, notary processes look like? Like wouldn't, wouldn't we would want just like clients to go through say Glyph and one of these to be created automatically for when they run out of their first 32. Yeah, I think that that's a pretty reasonable statement actually. And one of the thoughts that I was having is like, I, ideally like over time, we 
increase like I, I don't know if like just over 32 would would result in something this complex being set up for each client because if you look at like the number of client addresses that exist today uh, if you look at the total number of allocations minus glyph we're still at like 120 having 120 allocations like requiring their own like wallet being set up and a bunch of sort of extra overhead from like the root key holder and the notary perspective may not necessarily be the right thing and so I would probably hope that we get better at identification of like what we deem to be reasonable and fair behavior. And so like Glyph itself may get bigger. We might introduce like additional automated notaries because that's probably going to help like cover like a bunch of the gap. And then maybe the requirements for qualifying for this shrink a little bit over time. And so maybe this comes down to like greater than hundred Debbie bytes or something. And we get like automated verification up to uh, as much as we possibly can. And then like what's left in the middle is like what requires that manual verification, which hopefully over time becomes a very small portion. Um, but yeah, I think that like this is going to be a very good thing for us as a community to understand like what are the things that we actually care about and like understanding how we're going to track those things and build automation around those things. So whether that's like getting things into a dashboard, getting alerts up, getting reports published, like these kinds of things as we become aware and we find ways in which we can openly share and publish these, these things in a transparent way. I think it's going to do a lot of wonders for us and like unblocking notaries and unblocking uh, clients from proving that they're, they're attempting to do the right thing on chain uh, and therefore hopefully result in much faster and much easier and more accurate data cap allocations in the future. Yeah, Andrew. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, hey, I think I had mentioned to you that uh, this out of band and I was curious if this made it into the issue or some thinking, but we want this um, for one of our projects, but it's pretty clear, like because of the gap between when I uh, sort of commit my data cap to a deal and that deal making it on chain, that there's many hours between uh, like, so every, every project doing this, if it was in a live situation, would have to go offline essentially for a number of hours because they wouldn't have any data cap left unless they sort of make a gamble or I, I don't actually know how that works. So it's almost like we're going to need two clients that are both ready so that we can have some sort of blue green deployment where when one is waiting for a new data cap, the other one is standing in. Um, so just throwing that out there that this to make it really functional in like a high throughput production environment might need a little tweak. Yeah. So I think the, the fourth bullet here is, is, well, actually, I think the, there's two angles to this, Andrew. So one is that like, your address can't receive data cap while it doesn't have data cap. So this is like a temporary like, bug given that the FIP boss and therefore the community agreed that uh, we should support like data cap top ops on the same client address. Um, while that's still a, an issue, I do think that you're right. It's probably reasonable for you to assume that you would have to have like two client addresses. And I think many clients are working with multiple addresses at this point because of that reason. Um, are you saying second... top up before you've run out of data cap? Yeah, because so okay. the, the fourth bullet basically says like as soon as you cross the ninety percent threshold, you should go and ah, okay, 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 your okay, next lovely. Set. Yeah, nice. And so for now, like even though that bullet exists, and, and maybe ninety percent is too high, maybe that number should have been like something based on the allocation rate. But I think as Julian mentioned, we should expect that these things will probably get tweaked. But the framework is there to say that like as long as you've allocated a majority, you can ask for your next sort of allocation. Um, I think what we, what we ideally that would be on the same client address. So you wouldn't have to worry about like as a client at operating at scale, you don't need to worry about like managing multiple addresses and then managing your own like deal indexing on like, where is the data cap flowing out of what like wallet and what will happen over time. But so like the date today is like end of April. My expectation is like, we're going to sort of agree that we should proceed with like a basic version of implementation here. It'll take about two weeks to get like a, an implementation ready to be tested and the repo to be stood up. We'll probably chat about this next at the fill plus day is like how like clients can apply and, and maybe this becomes like a short like lightning talk for like large clients that do watch that content, which I think would be a great outcome. Um, and then I would imagine like what I'd like sort of propose is that an application itself for a client it like stays for about two weeks, so at least there's one governance call that it's brought up and if it needs to be discussed like synchronously within the notaries that are interested. Um, and so like the earliest. Like if, if clients open up applications like day of like Phil Plus Summit, like I would still imagine that it would be like June 1st or, or like early June where like this would actually go through. And so if the actual implementation is done and the network upgrade that comes in mid June, like does result in that being fixed, it might be that like some clients never have to worry about 
like multiple addresses as well. Does that sound reasonable? I'm going to take silence as a yes. Totally reasonable. Silence is always a yes. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. So I think we're gonna we're gonna proceed on this. Uh, we've talked about it a few times, um, as is the case with the other thing. Sort of, it it feels like there's general consensus that this is worth trying out at least. Uh, and I haven't really heard any any significant pushback in this direction. I, I do think that like we should be wary of this, and we should ensure that we're putting in the right throttles and the right visibility. Uh, and so um, I personally will be spending as much time as I can in the next couple of weeks to get that in place as well. Uh, and so for the notaries, a request I have for you is I will be reaching out to all of you uh, in the coming two weeks effectively uh, to do like some sort of like quick interview with the dashboards that we'd like, we'd like to get stood up with the last grant that went up to ensure that you're getting the visibility on chain that you would like. Uh, and so the ask from you would be to please give me some of your time in the, in the next few weeks and share your opinions and feedback on, on the things that are being built to help you uh, serve as notaries in the future. Cool. All right. So the the one issue that is a bit of an ongoing conversation, um, but this is back. This is a slightly older issue that's been open for a while now around like decentralization requirements for like self making and self self dealing. Um, so the the delta or the recent change on this is basically well. Okay. Before we get into that, I would say the status quo is is that like generally there is a principle of decentralization and distribution in Farcoin Plus. As a result, most notaries are sort of adhering to, you shouldn't allocate all your data cap to yourself. Uh, and most notaries are making decisions that are subjective and on a case by case basis. Uh, but that number has typically hovered between, in some cases like 20 to 30-ish percent, uh, and then in other cases higher. And so uh, I think some of those clients are also adjusting their behavior based on like the conversations that are happening. Um, but the latest on this is basically, uh, Elio wrote a proposal which basically says, why don't we limit the amount of verified deals going per miner as a mechanism to reduce the incentive towards self dealing and then had and had this like proposal of a ramp up. Uh, I think we can continue to discuss this one. Uh, but what I did want to flag for today's conversation was that um, Nelson, I don't know if you're here, uh, but you basically asked for having a clear sort of audit and compliance process for disputes. Uh, against what what is deemed to be excessive, or at least finding a way to like provide the knowledge or whistle those so that like the rest of the community is aware, uh, and like a notary can take like correspondingly accurate action. That's what I wanted to like talk a little bit about today was like ensuring that we're providing um, the right mechanism uh, for notaries and for I guess for other clients and miners. And so I guess the the question I have for the room is like on the notary governance page there is a section around like audits and dispute. Um, but I don't think anybody's exercised that flow. Like it hasn't happened yet. Uh, and so I guess the, the, the question is, has anybody felt like they needed to exercise it and that wasn't clear enough or they didn't even know where they looked or has anybody looked at it and has any feedback on how we can improve it? Because that I do agree that we should have that like regardless of the outcome of this particular issue and how we're thinking about it. But that, that is like a pretty like important thing for the community to feel like they have access to and, and they have an opportunity to raise a voice or, or raise an issue to the platform yeah so i'd love to get some feedback on this or any thoughts on this so deep when i understand you to limit the deals verified deals per miner how would what how would it work if you suppose it's our free deals per day how would it work if there are five or ten miners available for your application and you need to send out 300 how before we hop into that one and i just want to like get some opinions on the audit stuff and then that's definitely okay so i uh because i think the i think that the, this issue is, is going to be an ongoing issue and an ongoing discussion but the audit part of it like i think that should be addressed as soon as possible like people should know that like there's a way yeah, to yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead go ahead sorry uh, i mean has anybody has anybody looked at the flow? Has has any opinions? If not, then my, my ask to you after this call is to go look at it and and share some thoughts. Yeah, I, I never tried that process yet. Uh, I mean, it's it's basically like file an issue, and here's how you share like what you need to share. But 
I don't know if that works. Like we're, we're doing this as a community for the first time and we as a community are doing this in like the world basically for the first time. And so uh, we're work, we all need to sort of work together to figure out like what the right model is. Um, but yeah, you're not the only one that that's like, I haven't either. <laughs> Yeah, but, but I also haven't had a reason to. So I, I have I have a thousand of good reason. <laughs> Didn't spend any time on that. Uh, no, to to be honest, I think it's it's it, it's today it's time consuming. We we don't have any tooling for that. Uh, so we have to do everything manually, and I didn't take that time on my side personally. So, uh, but of course we, we could think about doing it. Um, also, also uh, and uh, I think um, when it's public data, I mean, um, because there is two type of data we, are, we have now. Okay, there is public and private data. So um, when it's private, we will need to understand how, how useful is it, actually. And I don't know how we can achieve that. So each time we just ask the clients that they will agree that to work together so we can understand to what uh, how the data are used and we can just ask to dig in one sector to see what's happening. Uh, when it's public data, if it's public data that are stored, but you don't have any website, you have no way to, you know, get the data back. I mean, it's, it's like, it's almost like private data. I mean, they are not very useful. So um, it, I think it's a, it's a lot of work just to do that. Just to, I mean, I just have 10 TIB to allocate, but people with uh, one PIB. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel not to the notary from Fenbuji is here. Uh, <laughs> if you have, if you have any thoughts on that, I would, we'd love to hear them. Yeah, today it's time consuming, I think. So, um... yeah, definitely. Okay, so I think this one is going to be a little bit of homework. But for those of you that do have the time in the next few days, if you would just take a look at the the current existing audit process and see if you have any thoughts. And I think that would be a good way for us to make an effort towards sort of improving that flow. Um, so back to the discussion then. So why don't I, let's, let's chat a little bit about the latest proposal, which is around like yeah. restricting based on, on minors per day. So I think the proposal from, I don't think Ilya is here. Uh, I did not see him enter the room. Uh, I didn't let him in at least. No. Okay. So that. So I think it might be good to have him participate as well in, in when we're discussing this, but um, the from what I understood from reading it was basically that like that number could go up, like it could be, like you said, it could be say three deals or, or whatever, like the community thinks it is. Um, that was one take where like his expectation would be that like you would just work harder to find those other miners and make more deals with other miners. And if you physically can't, and there's not enough miners that can meet your need. I think that's, is that what you're flagging where like there, there exists cases in which- Yeah, like more or less. It, I think it depends on your, uh, on your application you're building, uh, like you're going to store data and um, uh, maybe for, for, for one person, it can be over three miners, for one, it can be over five. Uh, another can take 10 miners or whatever uh, for redundancy reasons. Um, and uh, I'm not opposing to this proposal from Elio, uh, but I do think that it should be up to the notary to decide how many miners you should use to store your data, including yourself. So if you store one copy on your own miner, let's say you have to store eight copies on, on some other miners and put it in the application then, and those miners should agree to take the data from you. So that it will work. Uh, on the end that you're not stuck you cannot see yeah. the data anywhere i think the the other pivot that he had in his proposal um so just as a reminder the original proposal was a lot sim like a lot like more simplistic uh, yeah. which which is from me which is just like if there's you know if there's greater than three miners that can actually take your data in your region then like ensure that you make deals with at least four miners including yourself right it was like 25 percent can end up like yeah, yeah. the same client to the miner um so th this was basically saying like instead of having to moderate like that like go straight to the minor i think the other sort of uh, proposal that he had was actually adjusting the story the the quality adjustment factor uh, mm -hmm. on a on a per minor basis as well which is effectively like if 
uh, you know, if if it's the client, then like maybe it's not 10x. Or if it's a miner that's received like multiple deals of data cap, then maybe like incremental deals like decrease from 10 to like smaller values. Like that's at yeah. least how I read what he had in the issue. Um, but the, the the downside of this, uh, uh, at least from for us, it will be uh, we applied for a data cap of uh, one terabyte per day. Uh, supposing that we are going to store it on six miners, then the data cap will be times six. And maybe we should store it on 10 miners. I don't mind. But then the data cap should be times 10. Uh, right, because you, for you, from your perspective as a client, you're basically saying you want the same amount of data. You can replicate it more times. Yeah. I, I don't mind sending it to more miners and uh, to do more distribution to decentralize. Uh, but what I'm opposing is that um, um, you should not uh, take away some form of redundancy that you're going to lose your data down the road. Because if you if you distribute one copy of the data over two miners, and then then you risk losing it. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, I think it's reasonable. Um, I'm going to time bound this conversation to maybe a couple more comments because I want to yeah. spend more time in the notary elections. I don't think we're going to be closing this one out anytime soon. I think that the, the existing status quo is probably going to continue for some time, which is a, like it's sort of up to the notaries as, as we all learn through this process. Why not? So I think your I statements are fair. I think uh, deep, uh, that could also be included or merged with this one is that uh, I, I think that I, I mentioned uh, in a previous issue to um, the ability to remove the verified flag from a sector if we could achieve that. So it's more like uh, instead of just controlling all the time, all the different um, uh, clients, it's more like if we find there is an issue at one point, then we can just slash the client just by removing the verified flag from all the sectors. It should be a very good thing. Um, I don't know if it's achievable or not uh, on the network uh, as it's uh, designed today, mm -hmm. but if it's something we can do that, I mean, because what's happening is that, let's say what we see uh, that like as an example that we have one miner that is, has been created with just verified deals that we know that they didn't respect what we asked them to do. So they take just, I think was like 10 TIB and they just create a 100 TIB miner just in one day and allocating everything to the same miner, so they didn't respect the rules, then at that time, what they do, they have a, 10, a 100 team miner that we can just keep and running like for how long they want, because they can yeah. just renew the sectors and they would just keep verified, verified, verified. So I think that to avoid this, what we should be able to do is that, mm. just remove it, just remove the flag. And they okay. won't try to do it again, because I mean, it's gonna be the same story. Yeah. Okay, I can go do some digging and see like technically if that's possible or not. I think yeah, that I mean, in that, general- I mean the same, it's another way to just doing something similar. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I think maybe we should have a separate issue dedicated to discussing this as well, um, just for the sake okay. of tracking the conversation. But I think that that's, that is a valuable point. And I think Julian, you mentioned this, but that might also be the mechanism for like the dispute audit framework, right? Like where, like once we find, it is, it is, yeah. it, it is, it is, it is. Uh, I, it's so, not a decision from one notary. It's, it's uh, we just all together, we right. agreed that someone is just gaming. So yeah, it's going to be less time other... consuming on, 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 the, on the notary also. Yeah, I'd love to hear there any other like sort of opinions on that. It makes sense to me. Oh, Peter is just going, it's just giving us a good thing. Okay, not by renewing. So we, we, Peter is saying that when you renew, you don't keep the flag. Okay, that's good. But that, yeah, you can but try to game again and again. You can't game the same sector, but the point is that, I think your point is that we should be able to remove that flag from yeah. an existing sector, right? And that mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, There's also an interesting ask that came in this week around, can we add that flag later on so that a client can like start making deals sooner? Uh, and then like, 
go and get data cap at the same time and then come back. I think that's also a very interesting proposal I'm going to see if that's even remotely feasible. Uh, that also is is compelling from the perspective of like seeing like client actions before committing like additional data capital clients. So I do think it's interesting. Um, I think in the interest of time, Sonic, I'm going to suggest that we continue discussing either on Slack or on the next call, just because I do want to spend some time discussing uh, the notary elections and we're at like 10 minutes or so left. Um, so unless anybody objects, I think we should talk about this. So the I think the the big sort of topic here is around whether or not we're going to continue with the process of having like a target number of notaries per region, or if we're going to allocate the spots that are based on how much ever, how many ever notaries it takes that were selected to reach the amount of data cap demanded in that region. Uh, and so this has been, I think both perspectives of this has sort of been shared in the last couple of calls. Uh, Emma, Coda, Emma from the Coda team, you had some interesting suggestions in Slack yesterday. I think you're here today. So I think it would be great if, if you don't mind sharing sort of what your proposal looked like. Um, but my hope would be that as a, as a group today, we can reach a consensus on which direction we want to take uh, because the notary elections itself will sort of be like a several week long process. So we should probably kick off. Uh, and so like picking this will be important and sort of setting up the stage for how we're going to do it. Oh, yes. I uh, suggest we, um, for each region, uh, we should just look at the data cap, uh, not um, you know the same number of notaries as we uh, suggested before. Also, I think for North America and China, um, there are better ecosystem. There are more miners, uh, more data centers, uh, more tech guys more tech supporters. So I think we should give more data cap and uh, more uh, notaries for those uh, uh, regions. The reason is um, um, Coda, uh, we are a robot company. Also, we are going to uh, start the um, Coda drive. And of course it's on uh, IPF, it's a Filecoin network. So what we're trying to do is we are going to uh, sell those uh, decentralized storage. Uh, we're going to find uh, storage clients and uh, we want to get a um, data cup. I mean, we want to apply to be the client. Um, to do that, we actually get a very uh, good spokesperson uh, we're going to announce tomorrow. Um, we kind of, we're going to invest a lot to get our storage clients. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm, uh, okay. was, um, yes. Thank you. So I think the, the, the part that relates to the sort of issue at hand here is more that you're suggesting we should look at like either the deals being made per region or like the existing data cap allocation per region from this round of elections and use that as a guide to decide like the proportion of, of data cap that we'd like to, to reach for like the next round of allocations, let's say. Uh, so say, so then I, then I think the, the conversation would be like, say we want like X pebby bytes of data cap this time. Like this time it was like 1.9 or 1.8 pebby bytes. Say the next round is like, we want to hit like 10 pebby bytes and distributing those 10 would depend on like the activity in each of the corresponding regions. And then we pick as many notaries are required to, to reach that. Is that what you're suggesting? Uh, exactly. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Like, I'd love to hear opinions from others as well. I think somebody shared something in the chat, but I don't know if I can see it. Okay. Yes, I can't. Yep. My Zoom is acting up, so I don't actually see what's in the chat. But if you have any oh. comments, do you, does somebody mind? Uh, Megan, can you? Share if there's anything. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can read the chat, but nothing relevant. Andrew Hill just said he had to run. Okay. Do you, any any thoughts on this? Actually, if anybody has any on on preference for how we go about picking the number of notaries. Julian, no support for wanting more data cap in Europe. So yeah, I mean, I'm the only remaining notary I think in Europe. <laughs> I think to our friend. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, I mean, I'm, I'm very open for that. Okay. 
um, I, I can I can see why this would be better. I think it would be a little bit harder, but I, I do think why it would be better. Um, and I think it would also prevent us from the situation we're in today, where like a region like Europe is close to being out of data gap, whereas other regions have several, like a lot of data caps still available. Uh, so I, I, I understand and I, and I think it makes sense. Any other opinions? Are we sort of, are we agreeing that this is the direction we want to go in? Megan, do you have any thoughts by any chance on this? Yeah. No, I mean, it seems like, I think it's the right direction. Okay, I just see, I, know, about it. <laughs> I see nodding heads and I see people are interested in the robot. So I'm going to say, I guess we're going to go this, I guess we're going to go down this path. So, so maybe what I'll do is actually, I'll do as uh, Emma is suggesting, I'll like do, do some of the math and actually share what that breakdown could look like in the channel. Uh, and we can use that as a mechanism to sort of decide next steps. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, everyone's happy because of the, of the dog's availability, not because of what I just said. The future watchers of this video, there are robot dogs in Silicon Valley running on IPFS. I don't know if the chat gets recorded, uh, but people are very excited uh, for these robot dogs. I mean, it's, uh, it's hard. I mean, notary can be, be can be can beta testing the dog if you like. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is that what? It, okay. <laughs> so start I'm so sorry. Also, I can read it. It's a little bit dumb. Uh, it's pretty dumb. But uh, tomorrow, I got a main mask to um, along with she will speaks for Coda Drive and the Coda Robot Dog. I mean, Coda Drive is for IPFS storage. So um, I got her to kind of really speak for IPFS community too. Uh, they they must. Cool. Well, this, you, okay. this, this YouTube video will not come up before that. So you're fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No spoilers. You go on, <laughs> Sorry. Oh no, don't be sorry. Robot dogs uh, are very cool. And um, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Robot dogs are hard to compete with. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's all based uh, like our, our dog is adorable. It's adorable. Yeah. We, we have a head and um, yeah, we have Maybe a Maybe you should share, share some photos in the, in the Falcon oh, yeah. channel, Emma, sometime. If I, you don't mind, yeah. we'd, oh, love, we'd love to I, see I, that. I don't know how, how to share a photo in the chat. No, in the in the Falcon Slack, in the Falcon oh, Plus. Oh, I will. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. I will do yeah. that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and then there are a couple of other issues that have been open for quite a while from like the last round of notary elections. Um, and so the for the bottom two, I feel like there's like pretty clear sort of next steps that were outlined. And so I think we don't need to spend too much time on those. But the the issue seventy eight was an interesting one that had a lot of conversation last time, which is that a notary's entity, which is like the organization that they represent should be in the same region that they apply. Uh, last time around, this was not the case. It was actually based on where the notary themselves are operating. Um, personally, to me, my opinion is it makes more sense to stick to like where they, they choose to operate as opposed to where the company is registered. Because like, if a, if a person is operating in a different like geography and they're the one serving as a notary, then their parent organization, then they're probably going to have better context and better ability to serve that region, uh, whether that's because of language or local business context and things like that. Uh, and so that's sort of my gut reaction, but I also wanted to open this up to conversation to see if I was coming from like previous historic bias or having done things a particular way and, and needing to see if we should readdress. Mm, okay. Um, I think it's, it, it makes sense what you just said. So this is more where they operate, but today it's very difficult to, to check this. The only thing we can really check is uh, where the company is registered. That's the easiest thing. Uh, so uh, as notary, I mean, I mean, we need to find a way to ensure that when we qualify something, it's properly qualified. So t today it's very difficult to understand where the, yeah. the different team are operating. Like I just received one today, which is a valid one. Uh, but actually they said that they provide this for Ethereum and Falcon users. So like it's it's worldwide. So they decided to apply in all the different regions. Yeah, so I think there's, there's, there's two takes here. So one is like on the layer of the notaries themselves, which I think we're fine with them being in the region that they operate, if we can come up with some way to verify that. And so maybe the answer to that, Julian is like, as part of the due diligence process for notary selection, like there's all the stuff that notaries share about like their website, their like LinkedIn's, their like social media accounts and stuff. 
that could be used as like an initial sort of auth where it's like, what is it, the location on your LinkedIn that you choose to spend time in? Like what time zones are you typically operating in? That could be like one easy proxy. Um, I think there are better and more sophisticated ways to do this as like the general world of decentralized ID also like improves and, and comes up to speed. And so there were a couple of projects that were suggested on this issue that I think we can go and do some investigation in. Then on the note of clients, uh, I think that you're right. It's also, again, very difficult to verify. And then clients sort of seem to, like clients will just go where they can get data cap as opposed to, I think, like needing to like conform to a region by region basis. And so uh, the status sort of that I've seen there is it's more that we've fallen into a pattern where like each notary decides for themselves. And many notaries are now sort of deciding to be fine with applications coming from multiple places. Um, I don't know how that will work in the future. Like if we're specifically opting to pick notaries to ensure that data cap demands are being met in a region, then maybe that will happen less in and of itself. Like it will be based on like miners that uh, like maybe part of the like client selection logic is like what miners are you sharing with, where are those miners located? Um, I think I think we have more to more opinions and experimentation to do that. But I think that the, like what you're suggesting is like somebody comes to you says we're a global app and it looks like they're a global application then to some extent you're gonna just say yes and then we can go and see like who they made deals with right once we have like a better processes set in place. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we're also pretty much at time. Uh, the only thing I wanted to flag was effectively like what like the timeline would be if we went and did elections it would probably take like two weeks of open apps two weeks for scoring uh, and then about a week at least to get like everything approved and allocated by root key holders as some of our other notaries know who were just activated last week sometimes it takes longer than a week uh, to get everything in line um but yeah like I, I i don't think we need to push this overly difficultly i was sort of trying to see if we can frame this around like phil plus day because we will have some session from the notaries i think that it will be interested in sharing it for plus day so either we can open applications for new notaries immediately after um phil plus day or we could have it so that phil plus day is in the middle of the period but I think this can sort of be a work in progress based on like how the, the conversation evolves and the other issues. Um, if anybody has any initial opinion, I'd love to hear it. If not, we can chat about this in, in GitHub. Also, please note that like this is after the agreement we had last time where existing notaries that have existing data cap allocations that don't necessarily want more data cap right now, they don't have to reapply. They will be fine. Like data cap won't be removed or anything. So this is for existing notaries that are reapplying or new notaries that are looking to apply. Okay, uh, can I ask one question? So like we and Bushi, we actually got like, I think uh, more than 800 terabytes left, but we do still want to like have more data caps. So the reason is that like for some of the clients we have been talking about uh, is like listed company in China, which have, uh, they have like a huge requirement for for data cap so which uh, so like for uh, so for our current uh, guideline we only allow uh, clients to apply for like uh, at most 50 terabyte but 50 terabyte is clearly not enough for this listed company so uh, so we only have like uh, one terabyte in total and if we want to like give them like a hundred terabyte it will be like 10 10 percent of the our like total data cap so in this kind of situation uh, could we like apply more more data cap so that we can handle this kind of like huge application yeah i think it's it, you're totally able to open a new application i what i would suggest though is for like clients of that size like if they are getting to multi hundred terabytes of your data cap then they should go down the flow of like being a large client and this is precisely why Julian suggested that we start thinking about this was because like we didn't want to be in a place where like one notary was allocating like all of their stuff to do like just two clients, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that like if you have more clients coming in that are, you know, like may maybe you can share actually if, if there are like all between 100 and 500, maybe like the, our, our large client thing should work for clients that are above 100 instead of above 500. Like I would rather tweak that than make you feel like uh, you need like three peppy bytes of data cap because eventually these clients will want like much, much more. Like, I think that we should have a dedicated flow for that. Um, so yeah, like if you have any, if you have any data, you can share on what maybe their maximum like data cap allocation looks like. And if you can review the conversation that's happening uh, on issue number 94, I think mm -hmm. let's start there. Uh, and then accordingly, we can chat about like what might be a good way to proceed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Cool. Uh, I think we're at time. I, as usual, we're slightly over, but that's okay. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I uh, really appreciate it. As usual, uh, looking forward to the next chat, which will actually be at Falcon and Bus Day. So reminder, if you have anything you'd like to share that, uh, please reach out so that we can make sure that there's enough time allocated. Thanks. Have a good day.